I call uh, Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and um, it's my pleasure to take the final um, uh, <coughs> speech in this in this um, bill, Mr. Speaker. Um, before I do uh, carry on, I just want to correct um, the uh, speaker before me. Um, the Social Development Minister recently announced that 7.3 million a year will be re reallocated from low intensity um, home visitation programs um, and parents as first uh, teachers or PAFT to support more vulnerable children and their families through the more intensive home visiting program of Family Start, Mr. Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to correct that and make sure that um, that message got through, Mr. Speaker. I want to um, thank all the speakers today to, tonight for their contributions on this bill, um, and I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, point of order, uh, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, I waited until uh, the conclusion of government speeches on this bill to make this point of order, and I have two related points. Uh, we have been, uh, a financial veto certificate has been issued to the House. Uh, at no point in any of the government members' speeches did they speak to that financial veto certificate. And that means, Mr Speaker, that you, in your role as Speaker, uh, do have to make some judgments here, because McGee uh, quite clearly states that the Speaker uh, does have the ability to say whether or not a financial veto certificate complies with all of the procedures that need to be followed. And I refer you to Standing Order 3271. The financial veto certificate has to have two elements. It has to state with due particularity the impact on the fiscal aggregates and the reason why the government does not concur with the bill. On both of those counts, the financial veto certificate must have due particularity. It is fair to say that the financial veto certificate has due particularity on the impact on the aggregates. Um, as an aside, Mr Speaker, I would say it's, it's very difficult to justify that they constitute more than minor uh, aspects, but, but that's what the government's trying to tell us. But what the financial veto certificate does not do with due particularity is state the reason why the government does not concur. In fact, all the bill, or the financial veto certificate does is state that the reason is the financial aggregates. There are two parts to this financial veto certificate. No member of the government has come to the House tonight to explain this. And as the House sits here now, we have never had the financial veto certificate explained to us. I believe, Mr. Mr Speaker, there is a place for you to rule on whether or not the certificate <coughs> is adequate, and it I, is I a thank very the member, serious decision. <coughs> I thank the member for his comments. Um, <coughs> members, the, um, the Speaker has accepted the veto, and it has been tabled. You bring up two points under um, Standing Orders 3, uh, 3271. Uh, you made the point about the, um, whether the, um, what the concern was and what the government's reaction to it was, and that is in the certificate. It's mentioned quite clearly. Uh, you also mentioned that some members never mentioned the certificate. Um, I've sat through the whole of this debate, and it has been mentioned in the course of the debate. May I'm on my feet. Maybe not to the extent to which uh, members would wish it to be, but it has been mentioned. Uh, and uh, that is the end of the matter, because it is a financial veto that has been put in place by the government under standing order. And, and my determination is that the government has issued a financial veto certificate for this bill. So in accordance with standing order 328.3, there will be no question put on the bill being read a third time. Of order, Mr Speaker. Oh, well, I've actually ruled now, so there's no, no, it's there's a no new debate. Point of order. It's a new Grant point of Robertson, order, Mr Speaker. There's no debate on this. No, Mr Speaker. I point seek, of order, Grant Robertson. I seek leave of the House for there to be a personal vote held on the paid parental leave bill. No, we can't, because this debate has concluded. There is no opportunity. Order. This debate has concluded. There is no provision for a vote. So leave cannot be accepted. And I've actually given the ruling. I'll read it out again so it's very, very clear. The government has issued a financial veto certificate for this bill. So in accordance with Standing Order 328.3, there will be no question put on the bill being read a third time. Call on members' order. The
I am not uh, entering into any further debate because there is no debate. There is no question to be put. So there is no points of order that can be considered. Um, if, is it a new point of order? It's a new point of order. Ian Lees Galloway, if you're going to trifle with my decision, that's a very serious matter. Ian Lees Galloway. Sir, my, my point of order uh, is, is in reference to members' ability to seek leave. The House has the right to determine whatever course of action it wishes to by leave. Uh, my colleague Grant Robertson sought leave for a vote to be taken. Now, that, that, that is certainly it's not the way the standing orders are no. All right, uh, laid I hear, out. But I hear the point no. the member is making. There is no opportunity for a debate, uh, for a vote to be taken by leave or otherwise. This is very clear. This is the matter under the financial veto. That's it. There will be no vote put on the third reading. So th that's the end of the matter. You cannot seek leave for something to have a vote put when there is no provision for a vote to be put on the third reading. So that's the end of the matter. Uh, Grant Robertson. Order. New point, I hope, Mr Robertson. It is indeed. Point of order, Mr Speaker. I seek leave for the Parental Leave and Employment Protection Six Months Paid Leave and Work Contact Hours Amendment Bill to be recommitted to the House for third reading. Leave is sought for that purpose. Is there any objection? Yeah. There is objection. Uh, you're, if you're trifling with the chair, uh, this is a very serious that is matter. A new point of order, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Maroney, new point of order. I seek leave to table a document prepared by the Labour Whip's office today, dated today, with the number of votes that the Labour Party wished to cast on the third reading of this paid parental leave bill. Yeah, look, that's trifling with the chair, and I've already ruled, and that's the end of the matter. We won't have any more of that. I call on members' order of the day. Point of order. I have ruled on this matter. The member will sit. The member will sit. Now, the point is it a new point of order? If it's trifling with my chair, then the member will be leaving. Denise Roach. I seek leave to table a document which lists the names of the MPs from this party who would like that to That is trifling the with the chair. I call on. Ian Lee's going. Sir. It is within the rights of members of this House to seek leave to table documents. You can put the leave. Members opposite can deny us leave if they wish. But it is well so within our rights to seek leave to table documents. The order, order, order. I don't need any assistance. This is... A, I've made it very clear what the provisions of standing orders are. I've read them out twice. There is no opportunity to take this debate any further nor is there to be a vote. So anything that goes beyond that by seeking, by seeking leave to do and just trifle with the chair is out of order. And I've ruled that way. And that is the end of the matter. So we're moving on. I'm calling on government... Order. Members' order of the Point day of number order. two. Point of order. With respect, sir, that is a non sequitur. We are not... <laughs> Members are not seeking leave for anything to do with a vote. Members are seeking leave to table documents, something which is well within our right. I'm going to seek some advice. As I've already ruled, I have the discretion whether I accept the leave or not, and I have declined that. We're moving on, and I'm calling on Members' Order of the Day number two. Official information, parliamentary under secretaries and